Um, my name is Delmar Larson. Uh, my position, uh, I'm associate uh, professor in chemistry department, University of California, Davis. We're using the ChemWiki, which is a project that I direct out of UC Davis, um, and we're using it for both general chemistry classes and physical chemistry classes, specifically uh, Chemistry 2C, 2BH, uh, 110A, uh, and 107B, which are uh, upper divisional and lower divisional classes, respectively. My first exposure to OER was when I was trying to find resources in order to take the place of the textbook uh, that we used for a Chemistry 107B class, the class I'm actually currently teaching, um, that had a very poor textbook but an extremely high price tag. When I was trying to specifically address uh, the high cost uh, for my students, uh, I had used a first edition textbook by very well known physical chemists um, <clears throat> uh, and the textbook itself was uh, rife with errors uh, and I felt that $200 was uh, way too expensive for such a poor textbook. I felt I could do something um, that can replicate it and then I started to look at resources online. At that time, um, Rice University's Connections was essentially the only major resource that had it, although there were a lot of other resources that we can pick and choose from, um, but not large scale. Well, uh, for one thing, I should emphasize that the OER that we use, the ChemWiki, uh, is not designed as a canonical textbook to take the place of uh, existing textbook. It's, it's meant to be a platform for you to build textbooks to take the place of text, uh, existing textbooks. That gives us the ability of being able to uh, design things however we want. Uh, it also means that we have a lot of different existing textbooks um, uh, on our system, depending upon the campus that uses it and such. <clears throat> As such, uh, we have the content of the ChemWiki uh, based off of different categories. Uh, text maps, which are based off existing material, wiki texts, which are uh, faculty-based or course-based materials, and that's what I'll be going to now. When I click onto the wiki text, I can then go to a variety of different campuses. The one uh, that I'm at is UC uh, Davis, which is, happens to be here. Um, uh, and these are a variety of different uh, uh, classes that we have used it either exclusively or partially, either by me or by other faculty. Uh, when I go to uh, Chemistry 2C uh, class, and this was a class that first uh, did a, a pilot uh, as the exclusive textbook. It's a class of 500 students uh, two years ago. This is the general structure of it. Uh, and it's formulated in order to follow the textbook of the class uh, in multiple uh, sections on it. Uh, there are two aspects that make it, uh, um, or many aspects that make it interesting and different from a conventional textbook. And the, the first one uh, uh, would be, uh, you know, you can access the textbook at, at however you like. Uh, and this is a case of looking at Unit 1, Chapter 19.1, Electrum Potential, uh, and their uh, measurement. Uh, and you can see it's typeset to be as close to possible as a conventional textbook. In fact, some of the material that we have does did come from conventional textbooks that we got permission in order to integrate into the ChemWiki. We include videos, uh, for example, of this reaction right here um, um, uh, between copper sulfate and zinc. Um, I'm not sure if I should play it or not. Um, that's fine and dandy and it matches it, but we are more of a textbook slash learning management system. Um, uh, so if you uh, go, we have this aspect which is unique to some textbooks which we call an agenda. And this gives us the ability, uh, as we uh, present our class and our lectures, we're able to actually identify exactly what we want the students to be reading at any one time and formulate it lecture by lecture base. Um, uh, uh, where they can then know exactly what their reading is at any one particular time, uh, in addition to their homework uh, that's uh, put onto it uh, too, which we have fully integrated into the system. That is exactly right. Uh, in order to be able to generate the capabilities of allowing faculty in order to make their wiki text based off of uh, their own independent uh, interests, the faculties or as a large interest on their campus uh, or the students' capabilities, they need to have uh, topics discussed in a wide range of uh, different levels. That means that uh, you don't have one textbook, you need to have 
20 textbooks in a variety level. Um, and that's what's delayed our, our slower development up until recently. And we have somewhere on the order of 18,000 pages uh, of chemistry content from uh, basic high school chemistry all the way up to graduate level classes. So we placed an effort in order to try to construct a site that uh, would be used as close as possible, at least in the beginning, like a conventional textbook. Because the adoption uh, of the textbook uh, <clears throat> is primarily uh, the purview of the faculty member, and we didn't want to deviate greatly from how a conventional textbook uh, would operate, although we had lots of flexibility to doing that. So we don't use it quite a, as strongly in the class as we did. There are certain exceptions when we have, we have access to uh, various types of visualizations, uh, and we'll show those uh, um, uh, online in like uh, uh, University of Colorado's FET programs, um, or uh, chemical communications, uh, uh, Chem Connections, uh, or Chem Collective, I'm sorry, and uh, uh, Carnegie Mellon University where we can actually uh, play around with different types of uh, visualizations. However, uh, it, it, one aspect that we do uh, do in class, uh, and I did it for a, uh, uh, an upper divisional physical chemistry class. Uh, this is our the first quarter physical chemistry for life sciences is a quantum mechanics class. Um, and I would uh, uh, give my lecture on the chalkboard, but at the same time, I let the students have access to the actual lecture notes uh, available. Uh, um, <clears throat> so this would be posted online. So in that, uh, or on the subsequent slot uh, projector, so they had access to being able to see where I was going with my notes. Uh, and then if uh, the equations were not very well described on the board, they can then uh, take a look at them on uh, the notes and then obviously go to the notes as needed after the fact. Uh, and then because it was uh, uh, online, uh, we have the capabilities of introducing um, three-dimensionality um, via JavaScripting capabilities or um, motions and animation like what we have on the screen right now. Yes, actually, that was our primary mechanism when we constructed the site uh, seven and a half years ago, where students would actually, via extra credit or via forced credit uh, in classes, contribute to uh, the development of the site. That sort of uh, uh, crowdsourced approach uh, followed Wikipedia's approach, which we felt uh, was very beneficial because we had lots of students in order to contribute. Um, the, the problem that we found when we approached this was that it was converging very slowly into a reliable source that we can then use in the classroom. Uh, we then switched to a slightly different mechanism whereby students would facilitate the integration of existing content uh, uh, that we got permission uh, to integrate into the ChemWiki um, and they'd go through the, um, the legwork in order to put things together and, and typeset in order to make everything work out right. But we still use students in classes in order to do uh, specialty things, like, for example, uh, formulate questions uh, for our homework database system, um, uh, much of which is closed off from um, public view in order to preserve their integrity for exam questions and homework questions. Some are also available. Uh, we've used students in order to construct uh, videos in order to complement uh, some of the uh, aspects of chemistry. Um, um, and we use it in a variety of different uh, classes as uh, assignments in order to augment. That moves things forward, um, but I would say about 20% of our content is student-driven, 80% is faculty-driven from a variety of institutions that students then facilitate this integration. <clears throat> uh, well, we had the ability of being able to address the corresponding errors that we found in that that uh, class, that textbook, um, and we have done so. In fact, the class that, like I mentioned, initiated the whole ChemWiki, I'm teaching for the first time in a decade, or since the ChemWiki was started uh, using the ChemWiki this quarter. Uh, and so far, we've had very positive uh, feedback in regards to uh, its utility. Um, it has a very, the, be in an online resource that has a very nonlinear approach in order to do things. You can bounce around um, as you see fit. Um, one of the other capabilities uh, that we have, and I haven't, uh, uh, I haven't pulled it up here, is the ability in order to track uh, student uh, study habits uh, as they uh, uh, study, when they study, and how that study can ultimately uh, 
result in either positive or negative performance on exams or other learning uh, outcomes. And these are aspects that are not uh, explicitly included in the conventional paper-bound textbook. And, and they can access, uh, th this is particularly important, uh, they can access the material anywhere they want. Uh, for example, when I walk through uh, our quad, uh, I've had students come up to me uh, and just pull out their phone uh, and pull out a question that happens to be on their homework or so and ask, how do you address this? And this is, uh, students don't always carry very large textbooks around uh, with them, especially when they have a lot of them uh, in order to be able to do that. So ease of access, I think, is a very important aspect of it. 30% of our traffic is actually through mobiles, uh, mobile phones, not uh, via laptops. Um, I, I'm familiar with that argument. Um, <clears throat> uh, I, I don't have any data, hard data, in order to argue one way or the other. Um, the traffic that we're able to, to get via our Google Analytics uh, gives us a, a lot of information about how often students identify or pull up a page and then uh, how long that page stays uh, active, depending upon it. Um, uh, but we haven't uh, tried to go through that page in order to see if we can identify via maybe a burst analysis or something like that uh, uh, lay down. I'm not sure how effective it would be able to do that without using a uh, an eye tracker based system. Uh, and this would be an example of the sort of uh, traffic statistics that we can get from using the ChemWiki showing that uh, right now 716 students are currently on the ChemWiki reading uh, in the class. We've been pretty happy with a lot of uh, positive responses that we got off of social media uh, in, in regards to that. And, and there's this, uh, and if you just have to go uh, to Facebook or to uh, Twitter and do a search on Kim Wiki and you'll find um, thousands of positive comments in regards to the project. And that's really affirming that we're, we're doing a thing. But there was something that uh, I find particularly interesting. Uh, in the last uh, year or so, I've gotten a lot of comments uh, that have focused on uh, how my website saved their lives, which I considered relatively uh, facetious. Um, and I got one of those comments uh, last year uh, from uh, a uh, student in Zimbabwe. Uh, and she said, this website saves lives. Um, and that's fine. And I, I, I thanked her for the shout out. Uh, and, you know, we probably think it more likely saves sanity than, than actual lives. And I thought that was the end of it. And she responded quite quickly, lives, exclamation point, to, you're saving my future, hence uh, improving my life and saving any potential from being wasted. Um, uh, which I think is very telling, given Zimbabwe isn't the most uh, um, financially developed uh, to be able to invent infrastructure for their uh, their system like uh, other more developed countries uh, that this uh, it, that the resource that we're constructing uh, it has a very positive benefit uh, for many students uh, that we don't always uh, learn about via conventional textbooks or OER. Uh, and that has uh, certainly invigorated and supported our efforts in order to move forward. Well, at first, I'd say that our growth is exponential. Uh, our growth has been exponential from the very beginning. Uh, <clears throat> and that's one of the reasons why our project is responsible for one third of all web traffic to UC Davis. Uh, our goal, uh, uh, when we got our recent uh, NSF grant for our project, to expand the success of the Chem Wiki into these other areas, like I said, Math Wiki, Bio Wiki, Stat Wiki, Geo Wiki, um, uh, and uh, Stat Wiki. Um, and we just have some emerging four more, which includes uh, the social science wiki, the uh, um, medical wiki, and engineering wiki. And the fourth one is still, uh, we're deciding on what it's going to be. Uh, in order to build the whole entire hyper library where content is coupled from one site to another site um, <clears throat> as seamlessly as possible, such that this whole resource would match about a quarter billion visitors a year. I think that's still quite reasonable uh, based off of our development and our experience on these things. And the key point in order to emphasize here is that if we wanted to make an OER textbook that was able to take the place of a general chemistry textbook or even a general chemistry specific class of a textbook, we would have been done years and years ago. We're making a, an environment that's exceedingly more powerful, uh, exceedingly more flexible and then corresponding more useful. Um, and when I mean expand, I mean not just general chemistry, but all the different phases of chemistry from uh, pre-university uh, uh, level all the way up to graduate level. And then 
if you call that vertical integration, then you have the horizontal integration where you have content from multiple uh, fields that pull together in an integrated fashion because we want our students to be able to uh, integrate the classes that they learn. So it's not just here is one topic and here's another topic, but how they learn uh, blur together. And I think our resource, our, our textbooks should reflect that sort of integration that we want the students to have. A typical example I give is if a student is learning um, uh, enzymatic uh, catalysis in a bio wiki uh, class, uh, in order to master that, they need to understand chemical kinetics off the chem wiki. And understand the chemical kinetics, you need to understand uh, some aspects of differential equations off the math wiki. Um, by having an integrated fashion that's as comprehensive as possible and interlinked, you can actually provide the resource necessary in order to facilitate a much greater integration of these fields and also a greater appreciation about how these fields are put together. Um, that is uh, uh, our general goal. We are certainly developing content. We are working on an online homework uh, database system, again, completely free, and we are going to be testing that out next month. Um, we are still building our homework uh, database system, sorry, our homework database that populates that system, again, freely available. Um, uh, and uh, a variety of other aspects like uh, three-dimensionality uh, and other things uh, that we're pursuing on multiple levels. Um, a lot of our effort is also focused on corresponding uh, adoption, not just content construction, uh, under the belief that when we build a resource that's useful in one class, in one campus, that that resource can be coupled into another campus uh, and a specific class there. Um, so uh, along those lines, when faculty are interested in order to adopt the ChemWiki or any other wikis in the hyperlibrary project, we will try to bend over backwards in order to facilitate that and even do as much of the work, uh, legwork possible in order to make that work. So this is not just a here's the site and make it work for you, but contact me and we will make it work for you. And, and if necessary, we'll even have students assigned in order to build the content. Just currently what we're doing, for example, in a, a microbiology class over in uh, Sacramento City uh, Community College.